around the fishing industry in Anglo-Saxon times, by the turn of the century, the port was the herring capital of the world. Nowadays, activities for families on holiday dominate the packed seafront. minutes drive away are the Norfolk Broads with majestic wind pumps built 300 years ago to drain the marshes. Created in medieval times when peat was dug out for fuel, the Broads stretch over 300 square kilometres of Norfolk and Suffolk. The area is now effectively a national park with strict rules to protect the diverse wildlife, including restriction of the speed and the number of boats, which is by far the most relaxing way to negotiate the waterways. Right, 75. Red number five, yellow 38. Back on the beach, right, Bingo's 70. calling. <laughs> and on the prom, you can play just about anything, including predictable futures. Your career line shows me that in the future, there's going to be very good opportunities where travel is concerned. You don't say. fiction in the Orson Welles broadcast from the 1930s War of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. The battle which took place tonight at Grover Mills has ended... Well, out in the real world, if you like shopping and chips with everything, you're in paradise. how that old favourite stick of rock is handmade through a recipe that dates back to the earliest days of seaside holidays in the world's largest rock shop. accommodation is round every corner. Depending on your budget, you can take your pick of cheap and cheerful bed and breakfast. There are also several permanent caravan parks which have a full range of amenities, including television in the well-equipped lounge, double bedrooms, and even a bowling alley. was obviously designed to keep every single member of the family happy. A range of hotels on the seafront are comfortable and competitively priced, especially if you're after a double room. And then after dining, you can simply stroll along the promenade and be entertained. There's always a circus or summer show on at the many venues in town. from Great Yarmouth is The Village, an unusual theme park set in a bygone era. Not the place to take a mischievous television crew with you. Thirty-five 
25 acres of land at Flegra have been set aside to let you step back in time. For under five pounds a head and less for children, you can spend all day enjoying hands-on what life was like in the last two centuries. There's a nature lesson nearby at the Sprigby Hall Wildlife Gardens. But the aim is to allow you to experience face-to-face -face contact with all sorts of cute creatures. Come extremely close to cuddly crocs, smile at snakes, and holler at hogs. you could go to the children's favourite, a tree walk as near as you're ever likely to get to urban tigers. Great Yarmouth itself boasts a rich heritage, not least the perimeter old town wall. With 11 towers and turrets, it's one of the most complete medieval walls in England. The Maritime Museum starts the port's history with the growth of the fishing industry in the 19th century. Today, the emphasis is definitely on fun. Now, one of the most important ingredients for a successful summer season at any British seaside resort is, of course, the evening entertainment. Every year here at Great Yarmouth, top staff like Jim Davidson and Little and Large draw four houses. For thousands of people, this is exactly what they want on holiday. 